All right, cool. We are recording. Well, welcome everyone to our first call of the new year. It's an exciting year for us. We've got a lot of awesome stuff that we want to cross off our vision boards. And our last call that we had, we made our vision board. So we figured it would be an appropriate call to do a new coach call this week because there are a lot of new coaches on our team. There are a lot of coaches who are coming back and starting their businesses again. And also there are a lot of new coaches who are adding coaches to this team. So that's amazing, number one. But it's also really great to make sure that not only you know what you're doing, but also your coaches know what you're doing. And we're working on really simplifying a lot of things and making things very duplicatable, very easy to share, very easy to like pass down to your coaches and your team, um, which is the this call. So if you've been on a new coach call in the past, this call is going to look a little different. So I wanted to let you know if you are, you know, you're not a new coach. Let's say you've been a coach for a while. You've got a solid business. It's rocking. For you, this call is going to be, uh, you're going to benefit from this call because you're going to learn ways that you can start mentoring and training your new coaches. And if you are a new coach, you're going to get some, sorry, I'm cracking up. Emmy's like frozen with food in her mouth. Um, <laughs> I wish I had my camera. That was funny. Um, but if you are a new coach, you are going to learn some steps and things that you can do right now to take action. So I'm going to hit share and hopefully the presentation thing works this time when I do it and you guys don't disappear. All right, cool. You're still there. I just hate like speaking and not being able to see people's faces. It's one of the most awkward things in the world. Um, so if you don't know who I am, I'm sure everyone on this call probably already does, but my name is Carolyn. I have been a coach for almost like four and a half years, which is crazy to think. And when I started this business, I didn't start this business with the idea of the intention that I was going to grow it into this six figure income earning business. I was there because I wanted to work on myself. I needed something that would hold me accountable. And this kind of just seems like the best solution for me. It was the most feasible for me. It was something that fit with my schedule. And then eventually I realized that, you know, this is amazing and I should probably take advantage of what I had in front of me. And I, I'm one of those people that kind of accidentally had success. Like I didn't know how to use Instagram. I didn't know how to use Facebook. I didn't do half the things then that I'm doing now. Like I didn't know how to post perfectly. I didn't know how to like, I mean, there were no such thing as stories. So I didn't even know how to do that stuff because it wasn't even invented yet. So the more that we start thinking about, you know, how to get coaches started, how to get coaches started. We keep going back to the basics and that's really where it's going to start. Like I, a lot of these things you're going to see today are literally how I started and literally how I trained the coaches on this team who are killing it right now, how to start their businesses too. And over time, what I've realized is, you know, sometimes we feel like we're, we're at a point where we don't have to do the basics. Like we're better than the basics or, you know, we've gotten so far, you know, we feel like we have to do all these fancy things. But what I've realized is that's kind of dumb because the basics are really what is going to get you started. So, I mean, some of you on this call, what I'm going to teach tonight is not something that I am going to say like, okay, forget everything you're doing and just do this because you're not going to see success that way. If you've been a coach for a couple years or a couple months or you're not brand new, if you've been a coach for like a year or more, these things I'm going to teach you tonight probably are not going to help you right now, but it's gonna help you mentor your new coaches when you bring them in. So everyone's gonna get something out of this call. And I really want you guys to focus on starting strong. The way you start a race has everything to do with the way you finish a race. If you get a, if you get a false start or you don't have a good start to that race, if you're running you know, in a, in a marathon or uh, not a marathon, but like a, an Olympic race, if you, get, if you have a bad start, you know, some, that, could be the difference between you being in first place and you being in like third place. So starting strong is so, so important. And I, I wanna kind of preface that by saying, you know, if you maybe didn't have a strong start, you can still come back and start over again and start strong. But those of you who are super brand new, we wanna make sure that you come in and you have the best start possible. So I just added this quote on here because this is something I heard on a John Maxwell podcast today. The most important ability is responsibility. So everyone in this, on this call right now has the ability to do everything that I'm going to share tonight, but it is your responsibility to actually do it. 
It is your responsibility to succeed in your business because you said you're going to do this for yourself, for your families, for your future families, for whoever you're doing this for. It is your responsibility to show up every day. That's the only ability that you need to be a coach. You know that. You don't need to have any special talents or anything to be successful at this. You just have to hold yourself accountable and be responsible for success in your business because your coach is not responsible for your success. You are at the end of the day. I can't figure out how to... I guess I just click. Oh shit, hold on. <laughs> I've been like kind of delaying because I'm trying to figure out, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we want to start with is important calls and meetings. And this is very important. If you are on this call, this is a team call. We have these every Tuesday nights at seven and you're gonna wanna mark your calendar. The link to hop on is the same link every single week. So if you're one of those people that's like, I don't know where the link is, I can't find it. Take that link that's on this, take a picture of this, this photo here or go on the team page, it's always linked in there. It's always the same link, save it in your phone so you always know what link to use and you're not scrambling like last minute trying to hop on the call. Um, also, the national wake up calls, those are every Monday at 11. These are hosted by our company and if you wanna be successful in this business, these calls are put together by the company where they go out and they like talk to other coaches in the network and get them on the calls and ask them, what are you doing in your business that is helping you succeed? What are some tips that you can share with people just getting started or veteran coaches or whatever? So you're hearing the most current, current information um, of what is working right now. So you're definitely going to want to be on those calls. And if you can't make them, because I know 11 is an odd time if you do have a full-time job, you could listen to them on the podcast afterwards, which is what I used to do on the way home from work. I would listen to them in the car, um, or you can listen to them the next day. Just write it in your planner every week to remember to either be on that call on the, the uh, 411 Facebook page, the Beachbody page, um, or to listen to the recording afterwards because there's so, so much information. And even the ones that are old, they're still valuable. They still have a lot of relevant information in those. And they're all on the podcast. So if you miss it, you can um, hop on. So the first thing that you're going to have to do when you get started as a new coach is figure out your path. Now, I know in the past we've said there's a couple different paths, but I really feel like there's only two. It's either you're doing this, or you're kind of sort of doing this. So the I'm doing this path is the launch path. And this is for somebody who, you know, you want to make money with this. You want to add value to other people. You want to be successful. You want to live your best life. You know, you want to launch your business. You're ready. And then the slow and steady path is someone who, you know, you want to go at your own pace. Maybe you don't want to help anyone yet. You're not completely sure how committed you're going to be to actually having success with this. You would be the slow and steady path. So that's kind of what we would consider a discount coach, I would say, for the time being. And then anything other than that, you're in the launch path. Like you're either doing, you're on or you're off. That, that's kind of how um, I look at this business. You're, you're not really ever in the middle. You're either doing it or you're not doing it. You have to decide what path you are. And then obviously if you're on a team call, I'm assuming everyone is launch path. You want to do stuff with your business. Um, so once you know what path it is that you want to be on, that's when the training begins. And oh, the lights just flicker. Nanny's here. Um, <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is you want to set your goals. And if you were on the vision board call, a lot of this is probably familiar to you. But you don't just set goals at the beginning and end of a year. You want to set goals weekly for yourself and your business. You want to set goals monthly for yourself and your business. You want to set goals quarterly, um, maybe even daily, you know, like I'm going to help one person today. That's a daily goal. Or I'm going to invite 20 people today. That's a daily goal. Like it's important to set goals that are going to keep you motivated and keep you going every single day. Um, so the biggest goal that you're ever going to set in your, probably your entire life is your why. Everyone is here for a reason. We didn't just sign up because we felt like it one day. We didn't just sign up by accident. Like everyone is here because there was something in your heart that pulled you towards becoming a part of this team and becoming a coach. And that is your why. And I know sometimes they say like your why should make you cry, but I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to cry about it. Not everyone is emotional. Um, I am, but your why should be something that, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, you know, you're willing to put your business first 
before sitting on the couch and watching Netflix because your why is strong enough to make you show up and do the things you need to succeed. You know, your why isn't just about you. Your why can include your family. It can include, you know, your future family. It can include, it should really encompass basically what you want your life to look like. And recognizing that this business is a vehicle to help you get there is so, so important. So something that I want to share is your why will change. And it's important to always make sure that you're checking in with yourself and checking in with your why. Maybe you want to write it on paper and read it every single day before you start your work. You know, maybe you want to put it on like your phone screen or something. So you see it all the time, kind of like your vision board. It's something that it's not something that you should write and then forget about. The most important thing is you should write it and kind of always keep it somewhere where you're going to remember it. If you have to read it, like I read my vision every single morning before I sit down and do my work. So I know why I'm showing up every single day. Um, so you want to think about who are your biggest motivations to succeed? You know, who are the people in your life that are important to you? Because it's easy to say no to yourself, but it's really hard to say no to somebody else. So something that I was, I was at a call, it was like a, a Super Saturday event, and Jimmy Hayes Nelson was standing on stage, and I will never, ever forget this. I have it on video if you want to see the actual, like, video of his speech. It's amazing. And he said something that always stuck with me and still sticks to me to this day, that if, like, you literally are sitting on a gold mine right now, you signed up for this business, you're sitting on a gold mine, not even just monetary. But with the, the ability that you have to change not only your own life, but the lives of others, like you're sitting on a freaking gold mine. And if you can look to the people in your life who are the most important to you and tell them, you know, I was sitting on a gold mine, but you know, you're not that important to me for me to do this every day. So I quit. Like, I bet you couldn't do that. You could not look that person you love in the eye and say, you know what? I had the ability to change our lives. You know, I had the, I had the opportunity to do it, but you're not that, it, you're not that important to me or it wasn't important enough to me to do it for us. So, so I gave up. And if you can say that your why is not strong enough. If you can't say that, then you're on the right track. So that's just something to keep in mind. It should be something that you're really connected to. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do when you're a brand new coach, once you figure out, okay, do I, how, how, uh, serious am I about this? Am I going to get going? Okay, what are my goals? I know why I'm here. The next thing you are going to do is create a contact list. This does not have to be fancy. This does not have to be electronic. This can legit be a piece of paper with lines on it and a pen. It could be a napkin or whatever, <laughs> like literally whatever works for you. You want to sit down and you want to think about who do you want to help? Who do you want to partner with? Who are people that, you know, would be really fun to go on these trips with? Who are people in your life that you would love to share this with? Who inspires you? Who do you want to spend more time with? Who in your life do you know has that gift of connection? You know, they seem to know everyone. Everywhere you go, they know somebody. People love to talk to them. They love talking to people. Who, oh, sorry. who would be fun to work with? Who needs your help? Who, who in your life do you want to share this gift with? And then you want to start, as a hint, start with your family and your best friends, your coworkers, classmates, people that you talk to on the regular, because they are, number. I mean, you talk to them all the time. So if you can talk to them all the time, you can talk to them about this. It's going to come up in conversation. They're going to see you making changes in your life. They're going to wonder what you're doing. It's just going to be more of a natural thing. And then I want you to brainstorm until you have at least... 50 people to start with. Don't stop. If you can keep going, keep going. Because what you want to get in the habit of is adding to your list every single month, adding at least 50 to 100 new people to your list so you have a lot of people to work with. And the more you get into this business, you're not going to only have family and friends that you're talking to. Obviously, eventually you're going to start reaching out to people you don't know and you're going to start doing all of that. But before you can even think about that, before you can even worry about Instagram and all of this fancy stuff, I want you to do this first because these are your lifers. These are your people that would buy dirt from you. And we want you to experience your first wins in this business with the people who mean the most to you. So we want you to start here. And eventually when you're ready to do that, we'll teach you all the other stuff. But before you can even think about that, we really want you to focus on this, your core list and writing down these names and connecting with these people. So this is literally how simple this system really is. If you follow the system, and even if you're doing this with your, this could apply to your like 
people that you know, your friends, your family, whatever. And then those of you who are kind of past that, which by the way, you never run out of your warm market. They are always there. They're, they're not always going to be ready when you ask them to sign up. They're, they may be ready down the road. So you're never going to over, um, you're never going to expire your warm market ever. Um, but those of you who are maybe a little bit past that, and you know, you're digging into your, your social media followings, you're talking to other people who you, know, you don't know, you're going to follow the same exact system. So once you know the system, you can apply it to whatever level of this business that you're at. So the first part of the system is the invite that should come from you. That comes from you because you are the person who's inviting someone. You are excited to share this with them. This should be something that is like genuine from your heart because you have it in your heart to share this gift with this person. Now there are, obviously there are better ways to invite than others. I don't suggest sending a long paragraph essay of why they should be a coach in, as your invite. Keep it short, keep it sweet, but and I'm gonna teach you some tips on that, but make sure that it's coming from you. You can use any examples that we give you. Obviously, if it doesn't sound like you though, then edit it so that it does. So after the invite, the presentation comes next and that is the share portion of this system so sharing means you are presenting this person with the information after the invite they're interested now you're going to get them the info you're going to either send them a third party tool like a video we have tons of videos in our back office if it's a specific program one you could always find that one in your back office um it could be an image you know we have those photos that have the details it could be a PDF, which we don't have yet, but I'm kind of working on that kind of stuff. So it could be a description. We have written up descriptions of what the group entails. So instead of you having to worry about knowing all the information and having to position yourself as the expert, we have that for you. I personally think videos are the best. I think it's great because it explains a lot. Most people are visual learners. Some are auditory, but a video kind of covers both of those. So they can hear, they can see, they can kind of understand how it's going to help them. And I've been having more success with videos over um, images. Also, if you just invite someone and then you send them like a package image, that's kind of like not really the next step. That would kind of be more in the help section. So once you share the information with them, if they're interested at that point, that's when you're going to help them. That's when you're going to say things like, you know, if I were to get you the startup details, would you be ready to, would you be ready for those? Or, you know, if I were to send you the different options, um, would you be willing to check them out? We can figure out which one works best for you and get you started. Like you kind of, the biggest thing is you want to get people through this system as fast as you can. Now that doesn't mean like you're really annoying about it and you like message them and they don't message you back in five seconds, you message them again. That just means that you're really good about that follow up. So getting people through this system is number one, but getting them through as fast as you possibly can is going to create greater success because, you know, when you invite someone and they're interested, they're interested then, like they're excited. And when you're excited, you know, you're, you're excited, you want to get started. And that energy and that excitement is what's going to help you help that person get started. Um, so when you get to the help part, there's two options, you know, they're either I'm in, you're gonna send them that share cart. You know how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, we have a video that showed you how to do that. So simple. And in order to do that, you just have to collect their email and what they what they need. You build their cart, boom, send it off. Um, and then once they order, awesome, get them started. Then you're gonna get them that, that um, eight step tracker thing if they're a challenger. And I'm working on one for if they sign up as a coach that I'll share when it's done. Um, if they say no, no, for now, something that I started doing is sending them a PDF of a like meal, meal guide or, you know, a free ebook or something of value to give to them. So maybe you have a free group and that's your, your added value. Maybe you have a PDF. We have lots of PDFs. You don't have to go make an ebook. Don't panic. We have them. You can share that with that person say, Oh, you know, like if they tell you, Oh no, um, that's okay. You know, I still wanted to help you. So I put together this ebook for you just to share it with you. Hope this helps. You know, I'm always here. If you ever decide you want to, you want to join us later on, or I can follow up with you. So you're showing that person, you do care about their success. You're giving them something of free value. That's going to help them get started. So I think that this system, once you get the hang of it, it's going to be a lot easier to talk to more people and also keep track of 
the people that you're talking to because they're either in the invite stage they're either in the sharing stage where you're giving them the information, you're providing third party tools and all of that, answering their questions, or they're in that help stage where you're either building their share cart or you're sending them the PDF. So does this seem like something that we can all kind of follow regardless of what level coach you are, whether you're brand new or you've been a coach for a while, like this is something that is easy to duplicate throughout this team. Does it make sense? Yeah. Not letting me change. Oh, okay. Okay. So with that, I think, did I skip one? No. Okay. So with the invites, I wanted to kind of take a step back and go over some examples of how to create really good invites for your 10 easiest, which are your friends and family. Um, or your A team, which are like those people that are like your dream team, your dream coaches, people that you want to have on your team. So these invites in particular are more fitness focused. I feel like it's a lot easier to invite to the actual business if it's somebody who is willing to work on themselves too. So that is why I have structured them this way. If you wanted to invite in a different way, you could, but this is just what I found the most success with. Um, so the 10 easiest, your friends and family always... I always use people's names. I think it's just more personal, but this is an example invite you could send to them, you know, like mom or you know, sister or whatever. Yeah. You know, you've always been someone who inspires me and I'm still freaking out, but I committed to this fitness boot camp for the next six weeks. And I'd love to have you do it with me so we can hold each other accountable. Did you have any goals you're working on? If so, I think this could be perfect. Could I send you some info about it? That could be something you could send to a friend. That could be something you could send to a cousin or anyone in your family. That could even be something that you take and modify and send it to somebody that you don't know down the road. But right now we're looking at people we do know our 10 top or 10 best or 10 easiest. And those 10 are going to come out of that list of 50 that you have. Now your A team, these are people that, you know, you're maybe you're friends with them, but you're not like best, best friends. You don't talk every single day. It might be somebody that, you know, you have in your head that would be amazing at this, that you maybe want to spend more time with. Um, another example for that would be, Hey, Alyssa, you know, how are you? And then you're going to insert something personal. So maybe something you saw on their Facebook or their Instagram, you know, I just saw that you got married. Congratulations. That's so exciting. I hope this is okay to share, but I committed to doing this six week boot camp. I'd love to have you join me. I know you're super busy, but this plan's actually made for people like us, which is why I'm so excited. It could be a fun way for us to catch up and hold each other accountable and challenge ourselves. Would you be willing to check out some information? If not, this is like the, the key. If not, it's totally cool, but maybe someone you know may come to mind. Would be great to catch up either way. So you're kind of like letting them off the hook. You're giving them the, um, you're giving them a comfortable place to say yes or no which is better than them not saying anything. It's better to get a no than to get a nothing because then you're left like wondering, do they want to do this or not? I'd rather someone just tell me no than be like ignoring me. So you're giving them that ability to either tell you yes or no and feel okay doing so. You, they feel safe telling you no. They may tell you somebody that might come to mind and that's great. That's a, a lead for you. Um, and then would be great to catch up either way. Kind of just ties it up nicely. So this is called the you, them, you. I don't know if this is actually a thing, but I kind of just made it that. Um, and it's really how you can structure an invite. First, you're starting with you, like yourself. Um, or I did it backwards, I think. Yeah, I did it backwards. It's them, you, them. So <laughs> just pretend that says that. So you're starting with them, you know, like, hey, how are you? And then you're going back to you. Um, you know, you're talking about what you're doing. And then you're always putting it back to them at the end. So it's them, you, them, not you, them, you. I was thinking opposite when I was writing this. So you're starting with them, you're going back to you, what you're doing, and then you're closing it with them. So you're always putting that focus back on them before you end that message or that invite. Um, so that's a simple system that you can use to write any invites if you are kind of past this point of talking to friends and family. Not that you ever will be, I wanna say, but you know what I mean. Those of you who are like really digging deep into your Instagram followers and all of that, and if you're brand new, this is something that you can easily start doing. And I encourage you to do, like there's some of you that are going to watch this call or be on this call and take action immediately. And there are some of you who might, and then there are some of you who won't. 
So I would rather have all of you take action immediately on this because that's what's going to create success. And the level of success that you're going to achieve really has everything to do with how fast you take action on what you learn. Because if you learn something and then you wait like a month before you take action on it, you know, it, you're, you're putting your success on hold for a month. So learn it, implement it, learn it, implement it. That's how you're going to see success in this business. And it's okay if you make mistakes because that's how you learn. Um, I've made plenty and that's why I've learned a lot of my best lessons in this business. So that brings me to Emerald. Um, in your first two weeks, you want to push to be an Emerald coach. I say in your first two weeks because, I mean, you can do this in your first two minutes of being a coach. You just need two people, and everyone knows two people. Um, it's really great to have that one person be a spouse, parent, or sibling, or best friend, more specifically a family member, because that gives you a control center. That is your, your center or your business center where if you want energize – and you, you have your Shakeology on ownership, but you want to buy some Energize for yourself, you can order it in your spouse's account. And that's going to not only give, like you're not just going to buy your Energize, you're going to get volume off of your own personal order. Where if you bought it in your own, you're not going to get anything but whatever you order. So you order Energize in your account, you're getting it, you're not getting anything else extra. If you have a husband or a sister or a mom or whoever and you order it in theirs you're gonna get the volume along with it that you wouldn't get if you ordered it in your own it also gives you the opportunity to purchase things like beach bars or sampler packs and use those as giveaways use those as like freebies you can sell them as samples you can do whatever you want with that stuff but it gives you more play it gives you more skin in the game and it gives you the ability to really you know, determine your success in this business. You have an account beneath you that you can control. That's huge. Um, and then your other coach is going to be friend or family member. And then you're an Emerald. Like you can literally do this overnight. You can be like, Hey mom, you know, I, I want you to try this. I know this is going to make you feel really good. Can you be my Guinea pig? Like I just started this business. I would love for you to try it for 30 days. Let me know what you think, you know, within 30 days, you should have another coach, and if mom wants to cancel, you're not going to drop from rank because you're going to have another one on that side anyway. So it's just something that is very, very smart to do immediately um, so that you can have more skin in the game. You're, when you become an Emerald coach, you also give yourself permission to earn more because you are able to take advantage of team cycle bonuses. You're able to take advantage of customer leads when you hit Success Club as an Emerald. And you also start collecting volume immediately. So if you are just a coach rank, which you are, if you haven't hit Emerald yet, you'll see your volume in your account every week. But every Thursday morning, it's going to say zero. And you're not going to get any money for any of that volume until you hit Emerald. And the volume that you're missing out on right now, it goes away forever. Like you're not going to get it back once you hit Emerald. As soon as you hit Emerald, you know, then your bucket has a bottom on it. But right now you have a bucket with no bottom on it and all of the volume is falling out the bottom. So you got to plug it. You got to put the plug on that bucket and to do that, you're going you're gonna to hit Emerald and that's going to put the bottom on your bucket so you can start collecting all of the, the volume that you're getting every week. So the sooner you do that, the more volume you're going to have in your account. And then I wanted to end with this escalator concept. So this business is like an escalator. Neon escalator. It's a couple errors in this, um, but this business is like an escalator going down. Apparently, the escalator is named Ann, and the escalator that you are on is going down, and you are running up it. So, if you were, I mean, everyone was a kid. Not if you were a kid, but when you were a kid, when you're at the mall and you saw the escalator going down, maybe you thought about running up it. Maybe you were brave enough and you tried it. And if you did, you know how hard it is. It's kind of like trying to run on the Stairmaster. It's basically the same principle. Um, I don't know if that's how the Stairmaster was invented. So we're going to run up an escalator and see what happens. But this is what this business is like. And I say that because in the beginning, if you're trying to run all the way up this escalator, it's going to take a lot of strength and speed. And you can't stop. Because if you stop, you're going to fall to the bottom. So it's going to take a lot to get going. But once you get going and you get momentum, it's going to become a little bit easier. And then eventually you're going to get all the way up here to the top. And once you hit that flat ground, you can run. 
And when you when you're running on flat ground, you can run really fast. So I would like to think of this escalator in this business as okay, you're starting down here, you're running, running, running. Okay, you're like now you're an emerald coach, you keep running, running, running. Now you're a diamond coach, you keep running, running, running. You hit one star, you're still running, you're not done yet. You know, you get up there, you hit two star, that's when you hit that floor. Once you get to two star, that's when you can run on that flat ground. And that doesn't mean that you stop working your business because all is good and dandy and you're making the bonuses at two star and like you're making all this money just because you're a two star. That's not the case. You still have to work. You still have to show up. But that, my friends, is when everything begins for you in this business. So it's really not that far away. If you look at it, you can be two star and above in a year's time. You can do it in less. I went from Emerald to three star in a year, so why can't you go from Emerald to two star in a year? You totally can. You could go to five star in a year. You can go to 10 star. You can surpass me. Everyone on this call, like I said in the beginning, has the abilities they need to succeed in this business, and the biggest one that you have to make sure you're doing every day is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to show up for yourself every single day if you are here and you want to succeed. So you cannot slow down on this escalator. You have to keep running every single day because when you stop, you know how hard it is to get back up and get going again. Those of you who maybe have taken your foot off the escalator, you know how hard it is sometimes to get going again. But once you get going again, make a promise to yourself to never stop again because you know what it feels like to stop. And getting started takes a lot more energy than it does to just keep going. It's really easy to succeed fast in this business. It makes it harder the longer out you kind of drag that process, you start to lose momentum. So if you want to really succeed, keep going and ride that train of momentum as far as you can because the more you keep doing, that more momentum that you start to build up, the further you're going to get faster. But I feel like it's really hard to succeed. Like if you're kind of taking your time with it and you know, it will be harder because over time, you will lose coaches and you know, people will quit and all these things will happen. But if you're just going all the time and you're constantly in that momentum phase, people will quit, but it's not going to derail you. And like people will cancel their shakes, but it's not going to make a difference because you're signing up to other people this week and you're always riding that momentum train to, to the top. So, or to the, the end or whatever. Um, so I just really, really want to make sure that everyone understands that principle because it was something that was taught to me very early on and it has stuck with me since. And it's something that I always remind myself of every single day um, because I know that if I stopped, if I ever stopped, how hard it is to get going again. Um, and those of you who maybe have, have had that happen, you know, I'm really proud of you if you're on this call and you're ready to get going again with this because that takes a lot of courage. That takes a lot of, you know, motivation and we are all cheering you on this entire time. So no matter what stage of the escalator that you're on, you're always working. And this is something that it's an easy visual to remember. I mean, I have a tattoo, keep moving forward on my finger. Um, it's not an escalator because that wouldn't be very cute, but it's basically the same concept there that be kind of awkward, like my escalator on my finger. But basically that's what, what that means. <laughs> um, so does anyone, you should get one, Emmy. We can all have matching finger tattoos. We just have all matching tattoos, our whole team. Um, but does anyone have any questions about any of that? I just really wanted to make sure that everyone knew, especially if you're brand new, if you haven't talked to your family, your friends, your, you know, your closest people yet, then you got to get going with that because somebody else is going to some other coach, you know, on Instagram is going to reach out to them before you and you're going to be really mad. It's going to happen. So get out there and talk to your people. They're your people. Yeah. Get to success starter. If you're brand new success starter is an amazing goal for you to push for. And that is something that you achieve by hitting success club in your first three months consecutive as a coach. So when you hit success starters, you get a free ticket to go to summit and summit is like the most amazing thing ever. And everyone on this call should make it a goal to get to summit. And even if you've missed that success starter window, you still need to get to summit. If you're serious about building this business, 
if you're serious about, you know, seeing success, if you just want to have a good freaking time for an extended weekend with your team in Indiana, if you've never been to Indiana, like whatever your reason to go to Summit is, you need to be there. If you are here to build a business and here to succeed, you got to get your butt there. And you're going to be watching from home, feeling major FOMO if you don't get your butt there. So I'm just putting that out there because I know a lot of you were feeling the FOMO last year and said that you would refuse to feel that again. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know that, Emmy. <laughs> Um, does anyone have any questions though? I'm trying to read through the comments, but I don't know if there's any actual questions in here. Yeah, but I always stay in phase one. That's so true. Let's see, I'm just reading them in case I miss anything. Oh, Lisa, so I can just sign them up and they can order beach bars as long as they're a coach. Um, yeah, so if you have, like say your husband wants to sign up as a coach, he would be your control center. So he could sign up. I suggest signing them up the first time though with the challenge pack so you get the two success club points. Um, but if you don't wanna do that and you wanna just sign them up just to have them signed up, he'll have to pay the $40 sign up fee and then order, he would have to order something worth 50 PV to keep him active. So if you wanna go with the challenge pack first, you know, you'll know you get your two points. I think you've got two already so that will put you at four and then that will get you at Emerald. And then like the next month, if he doesn't want to get Shakeology again, he can get beach bars. Like my husband right now gets the beach bars because he, um, we have too much Shakeology because he was hiding them in the closet for a couple months and I didn't realize it. So he's drinking, he's drinking my shakes now while we catch up, but he's, um, he has beach bars as his HD order. So yeah. Um, let me see. Don't tempt me with a good time. I don't know what that was about, but. <laughs> Tattoos, probably. Um, yes, Val. Does anyone want to? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I don't think there's any questions, um, unless they missed any. If you have one and you want to unmute yourself and ask it, you can. Or we're just like all celebrating each other in the chat. Yeah, Val, you have a question? Yeah. Um, what was the biggest turning point or like mindset shift that you had when like that first year you went from Emerald to three star? Whoa, you put me on the spot. Um, okay. I wasn't prepared for this, but let me think. So the year that I went from Emerald to three star premier, um, was a year of incredible growth on our team. It was a year of like energy, like everyone was so excited about the mission and about what we were going to accomplish together as a team. Um, I don't think that I could, I, I, I know that I can't say it was, it was me because it wasn't just me. It wasn't just things that I did, it never is. Um, but I think that my biggest focus that year was on developing leaders and creating coaches within my downline who could run with me instead of, you know, coaches who I had to pull, you know, I was working on creating leaders and that is the year that, you know, Emmy and Lauren became diamond and we ran together that year. Um, and I had another diamond coach as well, Carolyn Walker. So I believe that my success that year definitely had a lot to do with where my focus was. Um, yeah, I was still hitting high success club numbers. I was hitting at least 20 to 40 success club every single month. Um, I was bringing on coaches. I was doing all the things consistently in my business. I was excited as hell because I had these people running with me. Um, but my focus that year was not just on like, what can I do? How much can I do? It was how much can I help my coaches do? Um, and what can I do to help them grow into the leadership positions that they are, um, that they are like made to, to be, to be in, like destined to be those leaders and really identifying who those coaches were was huge because like if you you may be at a point where you have coaches on your team that you can run with like that and you may be at a point where maybe you don't 
And I didn't have anyone on my team really that I could really run with that year until around March when Emmy signed up. Um, so I think that, yeah, just really focusing on developing the leaders was helpful for me. And then always remembering to be in phase one myself too and doing the daily thing. And um, just the energy and excitement was insane that year. And it was just really cool getting to the end of that year, like looking back, like, wow, look what we did. So I don't know if that really answered your question, but that's just when I think back to like, what are the things that I was doing that year? The biggest thing that stands out to me is like, we were all freaking pumped and we were all excited and we were all running towards that finish line together. And that made all the difference. 100%. So we got to do that again this year. <laughs> we could do that again. Except it'll be, it'll be a lot, a lot higher of a, of a star number than three this year. But that's just going to happen organically. Um, any other questions? Oh, Emmy. I, I told you to hit diamond and you just did it. Oh, basically, yeah, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> there was no plan B. It was like, we are getting there. Like, we were actually pushing for elite that year um, and missed it by two diamonds. But we had such incredible growth that year that that momentum carried over into the following year and we hit elite that following year. So. Uh, Lisa, eight coaches of your own personally sponsored would be for diamond. And then you need to have two of your coaches, um, hit Emerald. So a coach on your left needs to be an Emerald and the coach on your right needs to be an Emerald. And that's where having a control center is really, really handy. Like you could get your husband to Emerald. Um, and then somebody else on your other leg could get to Emerald and you just need to have four coaches on each of your legs. So a total of eight PS. And then two emeralds. Yeah, sign your husband. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Listen to Val. <laughs> She's right. Yeah. Anything else? No? Is this something that you feel confident in when you have a brand new coach that you can teach them? Make a list of people you know and invite them and start there and not worry about fancy dancy things? Is this something that you think you could pass on when you sign up a coach? Like, do you feel more comfortable and confident now signing up a brand new coach and knowing where to start with them? If you have been a coach for a while? Yeah. And if you're brand new, is this helpful to really see just the basics of what you really need to be doing every day? Yeah, just see heads nodding. Gus is nodding his head, so. <laughs> Gus said yes. Um, all right. Well, that that's great because that was the goal of this call. I really wanted to make sure since this was our first call that everyone who was on it got something out of it. Um, and we're going to be doing these every month. So as you start to sign up coaches and grow your team, invite them to these calls. Every month we're going to have a new coach getting started right call in the beginning of every month. You can invite your coaches to it. Um, and it's just a great way for you to like be confident onboarding coaches because I mean, you know that we're going to have this call so you can add them to this call. They're going to get all the same information and then you can start the um, mentorship process with them by literally making sure they do that list and making sure they're checking in. And once they get past that, you know, once they get to Emerald and you know, they hit success club. Then you can start talking about, okay, like, let's, let's teach you how to do social media and like, okay, now let's teach you how to, you know, do your stories and teach you how to do this. Like, I think the biggest thing is like, we try to teach them everything at once and it's really hard to do everything at once, but it's really easy to do one thing really well in the beginning. And that one thing that's going to get them those small wins in the beginning is just talking to people that they know and getting them enrolled. And that's going to build their confidence that's going to help them, you know, see that they can do this. And if you're a brand new coach and you haven't talked to your people yet, go do it tonight. Please, please. You're literally holding your success, you know, in your head. Could Maybe you're afraid to ask them or you're holding somebody else's destiny in your mouth by not asking them. So just get out there and do it. Um, and just know that you can do so confidently because we're going to keep doing these calls and we're going to simplify this onboarding process so you can easily bring people on and get them the success in the beginning too, that's going to keep them around. It's going to keep them, you know, they're going to make money. They're going to feel good about what they're doing and they're going to stick around and they're going to be running with you. What running with you this year too. So yeah, <laughs> Becky, <laughs> it's 
spend a year and a half afraid. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, you were a coach for a year and a half before you invited somebody, right? And, and now look at you. You're like, damn it. You know, I could have could have been helping all these people. For no, should have been opening my mouth the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> You're not stupid. No, nah, I'm not stupid. I'm smart because <laughs> now I'm opening my mouth. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're funny. I love you. I love you all. I love you all. That's a great way to end this call. We'll see you next week. Uh, Lauren is actually hosting our call next week, right? Or am I a week off? Yeah, next week. Um, so she's going to be talking about um, event pages and how to really use event pages to fill your challenge groups and how to do those effectively. So she's going to be talking about that. So make sure you're here. Um, and let's set a goal for this call by, by next week. I want everyone on this call to have invited those people on that list if you haven't already. And then also I want everyone on this call to help at least one person by the time we meet next week, get up, get at least one person to commit to joining you. You know, we're starting transform 20 on Monday. Wouldn't it be so fun to have a friend with you in that group that, you know, a friend, a family member, someone. So everyone on this call, we're going to do a check-in if you help someone next week. So you have to now because we're going to hold you accountable. And don't think that you can just skip the call if you didn't. Like, you're going to have to show up and be like, no, I didn't. So use that as motivation to get out there and talk to people and invite someone. Because if you skip the call, I, I know who's on this call. I'll reach out to you. I'll ask. I can take a, a screenshot of everyone's face. Don't go anywhere <laughs> and I'll know who is on here. So, all right. I want to do a picture, but I can't figure out how to get to the little squares. It's just like Becky's face. <laughs> I don't know why. Copper, stop. I'm going to stop the recording though.